Hi, welcome to CCNA Certification Preparation. I'm your instructor, Raleigh Jones. In this course, you'll learn about routers and switches and when to use each one of those different types of devices in your network. You'll learn how data flows from source device to destination device. You'll learn the difference between LAN services and WAN services. By the end of this course, hopefully you have enough tips and tools to be able to not only pass the exam, but successfully do all of the operations in this course on your job. The purpose of the OSI model is to provide us with a way of describing how data moves from source device to destination device. It also provides us with a framework upon which to build all of the other topics that we'll be discussing in this course. As a matter of fact, we'll provide you with a chart that you can use for the rest of the course. A few quick, quick advantages of the OSI model. One, provides a standard for hardware vendors to manufacture hardware. This provides interoperability between the different hardware that you might purchase. This provides a better user experience. Number two, provides a way for software programmers to focus on one layer without having to make adjustments at other layers. Three, it speeds in the development of new technology. The seven layers of the model include, number one, the physical layer, 2. Data link layer, 3. Network layer, 4. Transport layer, 5. Session layer, 6. Presentation layer, 7. The application layer. These layers can be used both for troubleshooting as well as understanding how data is encapsulated. Let's take a look at the first four layers of the OSI model. These are referred to as the data flow layers. The physical layer, the data link layer, the network layer, and the transport layer. The physical layer is concerned with moving bits from source device to destination device. The movement of bits across media. It's another key word there. Notice I'm listing key words here. Bits, media. Now this media is cables and connectors and pinouts. The actual pinouts, the actual physical implementation that will be involved here at the physical layer to move the bits or the electrical signals from source device to destination device. Also include electrical signals here. A few Protocols and standards involved at the physical layer include EIA TIA 232. This is a serial cable standard. This is also referred to as RS-232 or Recommended Standard 232. Another serial cable standard is V35, V.35. A couple of other standards we could plug in here that you might be familiar with would be CAT5, CAT3, CAT2 etc. Also the connectors such as RJ45, RJ11, etc. Any of those physical aspects of the media would be included here at the physical layer. Troubleshooting always begins at the physical layer. Being sure that I have electrical signals actually being received by the device. The data link layer is subdivided into two sublayers. These include the MAC sublayer and the LLC, the logical link control sublayer. The data link layer is concerned with combining bits into bytes and bytes into frames. So bits into bytes, bytes into frames. Keyword here, frames. Another keyword to include here at the data link layer would be MAC address. Media Access Control Address, the MAC address itself. The MAC address is a 48-bit address that is burned into the NIC card on a device when that NIC card is born in the NIC card factory. Another name for this might be Hardware Address or Ethernet Address or BIA, Burned In Address. The key point here to note is that different places in the Cisco IOS might 
refer to the MAC address in different ways, the hardware address, Ethernet address, or BIA, burned in address. A few protocols and standards to include here at the data link layer. On the LAN side, as far as LAN frame types would include 802.2, this is your logical link control right here. 802.3, that's Ethernet. 802.5, that's token ring. And we'll just throw in 802.11, that's your wireless standard. There are some other standards that can be included here, but I just threw out a few for example. Some of your WAN standards or WAN encapsulation types include the default encapsulation type on a serial link, which is HDLC, High Level Data Link Control.